Hi guys, this is Eilar and welcome to Peace Consumer Channel. Today we're gonna talk about a very important topic, generators. That's why we have a very special guest with us tonight, Jeff, more known by the name The Death of Tools. Hi Jeff, thank you so much for taking part in this talk. Let me start real quick by asking about yourself and your experience as a home tool expert, if I may say so. I started off in the trades uh, when I was still a teenager. Uh, I spent about 15 years working in the trades before moving into a management position uh, and then got burned out and decided to retire and took on some housing projects, personal housing projects, stuff like that, and started a YouTube channel. Uh, where I would go and uh, review hand tools and power tools and stuff like that. And it's grown over the years. Uh, I work with lots of different companies. I get to see a lot of different products. And uh, also on, on the road, we travel a good bit. So we do a lot of home power, mobile power in the RV kind of stuff. So that we, we've got a lot of different topics that we cover. So let's, let's get closer to the topic. What type of generator is best for home use and why? Every tool has it, the right job. There's the right uh, right job for the right tool, right tool for the right job. And with generators specifically, we're talking, let's say, gas generators. What you want to look at is, what, do you are you looking for home whole home power? Are you looking for emergency power? Are you looking for accessory power? So uh, there's basically three kinds of generators. That is your old school kind of what we call an open frame generator. It's basically a gas engine uh, in, in a box with a, power converter there that takes the, the gas power and converts it to electric. And then we have what's called an inverter style, which has a more sophisticated type of electronics. I'm oversimplifying here, but that allows a better, smoother flow of electronics, the, uh, electrical signal to come out. And it's better on more delicate kind of instruments and stuff like that, say computer stuff and, and such. And then we have what's called an enclosed inverter generator. And one of the side benefits of all these, these three is the big open, open one cage generator is really loud. An inverter generator well, it'll also moderate the power of the generator so that it's only running as hard as it needs to, which helps it not be quite as loud unless you're running at full steam. And a fully enclosed or AKA super quiet generator is enclosed in a, in a plastic box. It's got an inverter, so it only runs as much as it needs for home use. Uh, what that means is that means you're not gonna be disturbing the neighbors. Unfortunately, another aspect of generators, especially when there's big power outages and stuff, is theft. And if you have a super quiet inverter generator enclosed, fully enclosed, then those bad guys driving by your house can't hear it quite as easily and they're less, it's less likely to disappear in the middle of the night. What are the pros and cons of each type of those generators? Well, you know, there's the old adage of you get what you pay for, but in some cases you might end up overpaying. You could, you know, buy a super high-end generator. You could spend tens of thousands of dollars if you want. But the question is, are you going to get that much use out of it? You could buy a dump truck to drive to the grocery store, but if you're not carrying that much back, then there, what's the point? Um, you need to buy a level of generator that's appropriate to what your, you, your needs are currently and what you think they will be in the future. One of the things you have to look at is how much power do I need? And it's it, to oversimplify it, it it's, it's uh, volts times amps equals watts. So you need to take how much power you're drawing and then figure out what the peak power is going to be. And then you have to match it to the appropriate level generator. There's inexpensive generators that you'll only run every so often that you could buy for a couple hundred dollars. You can get a whole home generator, the one we use. We have a fairly small home in Montana where we get frequent power outs in the, in the winter, but it runs about $2,000 and puts out about 9,000 watts. It's a super quiet style. So you're going to pay more for the super quiet. You're going to pay more for other features. Uh, you're going to pay more for more capacity, but don't overbuy is what we always try to tell people because, you know, it, it, it'll just be sitting there, just be wasted because honestly, for most people, you're only going to use the generator maybe a couple times a year. How to choose the right generator for home use and what should you pay attention to? For just an emergency home generator where you're only going to want to power a few things, usually the things you're going to want to power is like AC and or heat uh, and your refrigerator and or your freezer. And maybe a few other things to keep the lights on and stuff like that. 
you may not, if, if you're not running a big AC unit, you're not running a big heater unit, uh, and you're okay with everything else, say you've got a wood-burning stove in the winter, you just need to keep the freezer frozen so the food doesn't spoil, keep some lights on, stuff like that. You could get by with, say, a 2,500-watt generator. And usually generators are spec by their peak power versus their running power. When you turn something on, the power spikes, that's the peak power. Then after it's on for a, a moment, it kind of calms down, and that's the running power. So you got to keep that in mind. Um, the so I, I would say a 25 to 4,000 watt generator is probably going to be fine. And those kind of situations, what you're going to do probably is use extension cords to connect to your major appliances and stuff that you want to keep on during an emergency. Now, in a home, a whole home generator scenario, you're probably going to be looking at starting around 9,000 watts, moving up from there. And you're going to have to have an electrician unless you're really handy. You're going to have to have an electrician come out and go to your electrical box and install what's called a cutover switch. And there can be a manual and there can be an automatic. And what those will do is when the power goes off, uh, an automatic will automatically switch over. In a manual, you'll have to go get your flashlight, find the box, switch it over and turn on your generator, at which point, which point all the power that normally runs through that box out to the grid is now going to run to your generator. And as I said before, you're probably going to want like 9,000 or higher, something that can output uh, 220 volts because most furnaces and most larger AC units are going to require 220 volts. So you're going to need a, a bigger generator from there. There's essentially two basic types of power. There's gas and there's propane or natural gas in some cases. And in some areas, it may be beneficial for you to have a natural gas set up because Maybe natural gas is easier to access than having gas that's sitting around. Also, if you're using regular gas, you're going to want to use a stabilizing agent to keep that gas from going bad. Refined gas does go bad. So the, um, the, the, in, in either of those instances, it's really going to be dependent on what's available to you and what's most likely available to you. Uh, in somewhere like in up north where it gets really cold, getting access to more gas, if it's a longer a longer spill where you need to run it could be an issue, but you may have, you know, propane running to your house or a large propane tank outside that's, that has thousands of pounds of propane in it and you'll be fine. Whereas like recently I spoke to some people who were just affected by a recent hurricane and for them, it was actually easier for them to get gas than propane because all the propane, because of the winds, everything had, had triggered uh, emergency systems and cut off the propane. So they couldn't get propane to their generators. Always remember though, that if you do run on propane, you're going to lose about 15 to 20 percent in power so you're going to need a slightly bigger generator for the same amount of power that you would get from gas yeah so let's get to the numbers what are the prices for generators i think from your basic emergency generator that you're going to be looking at a price probably around the three to five hundred dollar range uh that's going to get you uh the, the cheapest is going to be an open frame inverter from not a high-end name brand uh, and they're going to run about, you know, $400 in that kind of situation. Uh, if you're going to jump up to a, a bigger name brand, say something like a Honda or something like that, you're going to double or even triple that price. Now, if you want to go up to like a mid-tier generator, we're going to see those going in the probably uh, high 600s to $1,000 range. Uh, and that's going to get you something that you can run, say, a large RV off of. That's going to be a 35 to 4,500 watt generator, maybe even a 6,000 if you go for a non-inverter generator. Now, if you want a whole home generator, well, the, the sky's your limit, but you're really going to start at a price around probably $1,500 for an open frame generator uh, going upwards of the mid 2000s for a fully enclosed super quiet generator that runs about 9,500, uh, do about 9,500 watts. Uh, and then if you get, you know, bigger, there's larger scale permanent install generators as big as you want. Uh, and those go in the tens and twenties and thousands for situations like that. Have you heard about Generac? What do you think about this brand and would you use it? Generac is a brand that has been around for a while. Uh, they're well known in the industry. They're more well known for larger generators, uh, permanent install stuff like that. They've recently uh, moved uh, more strongly into the home generator, portable generator market. Hold on for a second. Generac is not such a neutral good kind of brand. On our website, we have more than 300 reviews on this brand, and the customers mostly gave it rating 
of 1.6 stars out of 5. Those reviews contain general customers' concerns about quality of generators, warranty issues, and poor customer service. Generac, on the surface, provides what would seem like exceptional service. When it comes down to the meat and potatoes of actually taking care of the customer with replacement of failed parts and or a broken unit, you can't rely on them to stand behind their product. It's not a brand I would go with. If I were to go with a larger generator, I would go, and I was going to do that kind of investment, I would probably go with a, uh, a bigger name brand such as Onan, who's been known for doing generators, large generators for years and years and years. For smaller generators, a portable generator, I would probably go with uh, either a Harbor Freight if I was on a budget or a Honda if I wanted something that was really, really bulletproof. Um, the the Onan generators, as I said, they recently moved into the portable market. So I don't know if the issues you've been seeing are with the portable generators or the permanent install larger generators. So it's really hard to say. But I have not heard anything on my end as far as negativity from it. But I'll be honest, the people that I talk to, most of them don't have Generac generators. They 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 either have Hondas or they have Harbor Freights or Westinghouse has become a big brand. Uh, and Champion has become a big brand in the portable home generator market. What are the top five brands of generators that you would recommend? Well, I, I think the the number one brand out there, if you're looking for just bulletproof long-term uh, support and quality, is going to be a Honda. But you're going to pay for that, and, it, and it's not going to be inexpensive. Uh, if you're looking for something that is more of a, uh, of an, a I don't want to say a bargain or entry level, but they perform quite quite well and quite close to Honda, and that is Harbor Freight's line of Predator generators. In fact, you can see as the prices have gone up to those over the years because of the quality that they put into them and the people who are, understand how, how good they are. I can tell you as somebody who travels around quite uh, quite quite a lot uh, in an RV, in your when you're in an RV park, you get a good idea of who's using what generators by just looking around. And honestly, it is, it's Honda, it's the Predator line from Harbor Freight, it's Champion, uh, Westinghouse, and I'm trying to think who would probably be the fifth. Win W-E-N, would probably be the fifth brand in there. And I would say that in line of value as well as reliability, that would be about the way I'd put it as well. And what do you use? We have a uh, Harbor Freight Predator Generator 3500. Uh, and then we also use an electric power bank uh, from Blue Eddy as a, a, a secondary backup. Here's what I can say when you want to watch out for when you're buying a generator is you, the first thing you want to do is look, make sure you're buying it from a reputable reseller. If you are buying it from somewhere, uh, some website that you've never heard of or a, a local store and uh, maybe you're traveling with it or something like that, if you have a problem and you can't go back to that or you can't get back to that reseller, then you're, you're only out there is going to be talking to the manufacturer. Then you got to look at who the manufacturer is. And sometimes the name that's on it isn't really the name of the manufacturer because they buy them from somebody else, slap their sticker on it. And if you're not careful, you could end up with a very expensive paperweight because if you have any problems, you're not going to get support. You're not going to get, uh, you're not going to get parts for it. And you may not even understand how to use it properly because there's no one there. There's no instructions. Manuals can be hard to read or non-existent. So going with a, a established company for something like a generator is, is usually probably a good call because when you need it, you need it to work. And you don't need to be sitting there going, I wonder if there's an 800 number I can call when there's a power outage. Maintenance. Is maintenance important for generators? Can a homeowner DIY it, or is it better to call an expert? And how much would it cost? Well, I think there's basically two levels here. If you've got a portable generator, or uh, and that's up to like the the ten to twelve. As long as it's not a permanently installed kind of generator, most maintenance you can, can be done yourself, and it's actually fairly easy. Uh, once you get to something much higher level, you probably want to get a service technician to come out. And usually in those cases, it'll be part of the service contract when you buy the generator, but it can run around $250 per service call. Now, that said, uh, gener generator maintenance starts with using good quality fuel. You want to use good quality non-ethanol fuel, and you want to have a stabilizer in it because quite often you can fill up a generator, run it, and not quite run it dry or even use half the tank. You never know when the power is going to come back on. 
And in which case that gas can sit in that generator for a, a good amount of time. And gas, gasoline can go bad. So make sure that you get, get a good quality stabilizer in your fuel, you mix it properly and on all that. Another thing is use a good quality oil and use the type of oil that is appropriate for your environment. If your generator is most likely say, like we're from Montana, uh, it's gonna be used in the cold in the middle of winter, you're not gonna want a super thick oil. Now, what if your generator is used down in some place like Las Vegas, somewhere it gets hot and your power goes out during the summer, you're gonna be running air conditioning and whatnot. You're gonna want a thinner oil in that. So make sure you're using the appropriate kind of oil and you're going to change it probably at least once a year at the very least. You're gonna to wanna to check your fuel filters and you're gonna to wanna to do a, a visual inspection and every so often you're gonna you're gonna to want to check your spark plugs and such. A good idea is to keep a notepad with the hours that you've run and when the last time you inspected each item on your generator. Each generator should come with a manual that tells you about the different kind of maintenance that's required for that. And I try to be very spot on about that because again, this is a tool that you may not use all the time, but when you need it, you really need it. And you don't want maintenance to be the one thing that lets you down. Is it safe to use a generator? Just remember when you're you're using a generator that it is a you're dealing with two factors. You're dealing with a gasoline engine that has emissions. And secondly, you're dealing with a high power output device. So first of all, with a generator, they are going to put out uh, carbon monoxide. I believe that's correct. And you want to make sure that's nowhere near your home. Don't run a generator in your house. Don't run it in your garage. Don't even run it backed up against your house near the eaves of your house because houses breathe and that can actually suck the exhaust into the house. And people have, whole families unfortunately have died due to exposure from the exhaust fumes from a running generator. You want to make sure a generator is a good distance and they all have a, they usually list a safe distance that you need to be away from your home. So you make sure that any kind, it helps with the noise and it helps with the exhaust and keeps that away from you and your family. Uh, Secondly, the power, okay? Anytime you're running power through an extension cord or any kind of device like that, you're gonna be running a lot of power coming out of the generator and you wanna make sure that you're using an extension cord that is capable of running that level of power, especially if you're running 220 or hooking up directly to your home through a cutover switch. You're gonna be running a heavier gauge cable. Don't ever run an extension cord off of an extension cord. If you need to run power into a room and you run an extension cord to it, don't then connect another extension cord or don't connect, say, a power strip or something like that to it. Yes, it may stop a voltage overload on the power strip, but these things get hot and those cables can, with too much power running through them, the cable, if it's not made to the right spec, could actually melt and start a fire. Is it eco-conscious to use a generator? Well, if, if that is an issue for you, I would I'd highly suggest going with a propane version uh, of a generator because... Uh, the propane emissions are much lighter than that from a, a gasoline or even a diesel generator. And yes, there are diesel generators out there, but you usually only see those industrial applications. That said, uh, just remember that this is being used at, usually as an emergency device or a short-term device. So be conscious of when and where you're using it. That's the other thing. You know, be aware of who else may be around you. If you're using this, you're going to the park or something to take a generator with you. Be aware of who else is around you and where your exhaust might be going and whether there's kids or children or families and stuff that could be affected. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's a personal choice as to, you know, how, how much of an impact or how much of a footprint is this going to put on the environment and what are my needs in the moment? That's honestly why we choose to use uh, an electric backup as, as an accessory. So we have a battery backup that we can use. And then only once that's depleted, do we then convert over to use the gas generator at home. In what cases, uh, generator is the best solution from all sides? I mean, generator, is it a necessity or an excess? Well, well we think of them as uh, supporting life support kind of situations. Uh, uh, we've, we've lived in the Las Vegas Valley and during the summer temperatures can reach 120 degrees. And power can go out. Well, if your power goes out, AC isn't a luxury. Air conditioning is life support in the uh, in the valley. So having a backup power generator, if you can afford it, is something that every family should have. Likewise, in areas like Montana, where we live now, the winter, it gets really cold. And we can have several weeks at a time where it's below zero. And as such, you know, being able to run heaters and stuff is important, even if you can't run a uh your your home furnace if you can at least run 
some small, like say ceramic space heat or something that's something that's safe, something that's not going to put off any emissions, and something that's going to keep your family warm and comfortable through the winter season in times of emergency. Those to us are the two most important scenarios where you know a generator isn't isn't a, isn't a, something that's just nice to have. It's something that's a necessity. Well, Jeff, thank you for taking part in this interview and sharing your piece of knowledge with me and our audiences. I'm sure that our audiences have learned a lot from this video. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for watching Peace Consumer and see you next time for more of useful videos and tips. Bye.